Hi, I'm Matthew from Solarbike. I'm just going to do a demonstration on how to put together what I've been calling the Swift Kit. If you have a look down here, these are the components of the Swift Kit. Basically, it comes with a Panasonic 9 amp hour 36 volt battery. And this demonstration, I'll be using the little mini motor. With this battery, you can use a 250, 200, 350, and up to a 500 watt motor as well. These are the components that will come with the kit. Essentially, you get a battery, a controller. The controller has three plugs, one to the throttle, one to the battery, and one goes to the motor. You get two choices of throttle. One is a twist grip, and the other one is a thumb grip, and a couple of torque bars, battery charger, some cable tires, and a cable to connect from the battery to the controller. So I'll go through this quickly on how to put it together. Probably the most important part is getting the motor seated well in the front wheel. So I'll, first of all, I'll just change the tyre over from the existing bicycle and put that on this motor. Okay, so I've just put the tyre on. Uh, now, the most important thing to do is get the wheel nicely aligned. You can see there's a few washers. This one has a little lug at the top. And on the other side, the cable comes out the inside another lug on here and I like to have the cable running down. So have the lugs facing upwards and then put the motor in the rim. In the fork, sorry. And then typically it'll sit straight in. Sometimes if it doesn't sit in you need to file a little bit of paint or a little bit there. But if you have a close look here, come closer. You can see how the lug sits on the inside there and then the washer will sit in this nice little gap in here and it will be nice and tight. Okay. So the next part we have to do is the torque bar, which is quite important. So the motor has a flat edge and it wants to spin in the axle and you can damage this part of the fork where it opens up or it snaps here. So we have what's called a torque bar to stop this moving in the axle. The kit will come with one of these, it's a rigid one, it's typically better, but it's not always suitable. And for this bike you can see, it comes out too much of an angle here. You really need the torque bar to align with this axle and run down the fork. So I have some other torque bars made up. These ones are adjustable style torque bars, and we'll use one of these for this particular model. 90% of the time these ones will work. If they don't work then let me know and I'll send you an adjustable one. I typically put it on the side with the cable because the axle is a little bit longer on this side. There you go. Line it up as well as you can with the, with the um, fork. Sometimes, often, there's a recess here in the fork, in which case, what you have to do, you have to put this in a vise, bang it with a hammer, and put a nice bend in it, then put it on, tighten the nuts, bang it back against the fork, and then clamp it. Now, this is the most important and slightly tricky little bit. It's really just an extra safety feature. If you have a good set of chromoly steel forks, then it's probably not necessary, but I recommend to put it on all the time just as a safety feature. You cannot put these kits on carbon fibre forks, it's, you run a very serious risk of snapping the forks here. Steel is the best. These ones are some alloy but they work okay with these mini motors. Typically if it's not steel you don't want to do anything over um, 200 to 300 watts most power. Okay, that's kind of nice and tight. Just tighten up those nuts. Just do it nice and evenly. Typically give it a little fine angling, make it tighter there. And then the final component is you need to put a hose clamp around here. So the idea of this is to stop the motor twisting in the fork dropout and it's a much much safer way to put one of these kits on a bike. Yeah. 
a bunch of different design torque bars. If the one you have doesn't suit, let me know or have a look on the internet and you can find different designs. Some have different size motors here if you've got a motor from a different source. Okay, that's quite nice and tight and that motor's not going anywhere now. It's very safe within the forks. It's nice and centered in the middle. You have one washer on either side, the one with the lug on the inside. The next step is just to adjust the brakes. So typically what you'll have to do is just align the brake pads with the rim, have it sitting nicely on the rim. Then you have little screws here, they work as pivots. So just align it with these screws to make sure it's nice and centered and then you can adjust the brakes. Sure. Okay, that's all nice, I've tightened the brakes, adjusted them, it's ready to go. Have these little caps here. This is a little bit of a weak point here. So it has a spring to protect it, and it also has this plastic cap to protect it here. Okay. So the next part after that is I typically uh, put the throttle on. So there's two choices, thumb and twist grip. Usually I use the thumb one if I can. Um, in this case I'll use the thumb. Depends a little bit on style preference and also where the gears are. So this one works, I know, with this bicycle, so I'll opt for that. With the throttle, you also have an extra little component, uh, just a little piece of plastic. It just stops it gripping against the grip, so just make sure you find that little component. You have one for each style and put it on. So what you have to do for the throttle is just back the gears off a little bit. slide them up out of the way and then you need to take this grip off. The easiest way with this grip is to lift it, stick a bit of spray, usually hairspray works well. There's a little bit of air guard for the mosquitoes out here, works okay as well. And then you should be able to spin this off get a spray under it and pull it off. There we go. Okay. This bike's going to be a little bit difficult because of these razor bars. You, you don't have much room here to slide it off. If you put the throttle, you need to leave a bit of room here for the brake as well. If you put it too close, you won't be able to change the gear. So you, as far as you can go up is around here, here, and you can see there's a bit extra distance here. So in this case, I'll just cut a small part. I try not to cut too much because the grip will come um, too small. But you can see here's about where it can go, here, and then a little room. So I need to cut just around here. So I'll just do that with a razor blade. Sometimes I find the edge of the bike is actually a good cutting edge as well. I'll say around here should be just about right. Okay. Wait. Just put the throttle on. Yeah. You can stick the little bit extra spray in. and then usually you sort of have to do this in parallel align the brakes and the throttle just need to be careful the cable so make sure this cable has room there's room to change the gears as well so that looks about okay there and I'll just tighten everything up in that position seems to work quite well. So you have a thumb throttle there and grips here. Some people even they like the cruise control so they don't put the bit here and they have it sitting tight against the grip so it sticks there. It's not the safest because this will be power on. It's a little bit um, graduated there, a little bit of power, full power. 
it's quite comfortable just to rest your thumb against it like that but if you want you can jam it against the grip and it will stick in that position but here when you let it go it releases and there's no power usually just to keep this cable quite nice and clean leave just a little bit of slack under there and put one cable tie there just give it a bit of slack make sure it's all moving not in the way and then I'll usually tend to put one just under here as well and then it's sort of out of sight when you do the cable ties up try to have the cable running where you tighten it up, just sitting under that, it gives it a little bit of space, it holds it nice and tightly and it doesn't clamp down too tightly as well. Okay, the next one I'll put the battery, the battery has a key and we need to put the battery holder on here and sit it in there. What you find sometimes with these nuts, they don't align correctly with the holes of the battery holder. This has certain holes here. Sometimes it's too close to the bottom or the holes don't align up correctly. In this situation, I just usually use one nut and I'll put a hose clamp around here, being careful not to clamp here. Nice hose clamp will hold that tight. Alternatively, you can tap a hole into the bike frame or you can even drill another hole in here. I find it's easy, it's very secure. A nice hose clamp, that works quite well for me. In this case it works okay, the nuts will align so there's no need to put a hose clamp there. Okay, it's quite nice there. And the battery sits in there quite securely. You have a key here, you move it and you can remove the battery as well. Um, if it jiggles around, sometimes just tape a little bit of foam down here or glue a piece of foam or just sit it in between. You can charge it up on the bike or you can charge it off, take it off the bike and charge it up. The next one I put on is this controller bag. The controller will sit here, it has a hole here. I run the cable for the throttle through here and I'll also run the motor cable out and connect it up here. And the cable to the battery will come up the hole in the bottom. So this one, the cable, this is the cable to the battery run it down the bottom out the bottom hole it has a little edge on it here and if you see, have a look down the bottom this is the switch for turning off and on this is the charging port, port here and this is for the power to go to the controller and you can see you have to has a little edge you line it up there and it has a little lip you have to screw it it's not the best design where if you have fat fingers it can be a little bit hard so I only do it really finger tight in there if you want to remove it. If you're not, if it's a little bit easier to charge on the bike really so I tend to always charge it on the bike but you can remove it if need be. Put that up through here. Connect that. Screw it up just finger tight off and you just have to spin it sometimes and then it'll click in when it's straight okay, and that cable let's clamp that this motor one I'll run up through here and we'll connect that in a sec and then the proper one I'll run it back through the hole and connect it on this side cable just here and then you just put the controller in and stick all the wires in the side okay, there's plenty of room there inside for all the wires and cables I'll do that in a sec I'll tighten that up okay, usually here a few hose clamps help avoid the urge to start cutting hose clamps until the end you have a lot of them to cut. You can do it all in one time. Okay. 
when you connect this one here, if you look carefully, there's an arrow and an arrow here. So line the arrows up. If you're really careful, you can see inside there's three larger holes and six other smaller ones. But if you line the arrows up here, you can feel it going in and then push it all the way up to the line and then that holds it securely. I like to put one just above here. And then give it a little bit of slack here as well. So there's some room to move. At this point you can connect the con throttle and the motor cable. Just be careful you don't clamp down on any other cables, go underneath them. Make sure it has enough room to so spin it fully. Just give it a little extra slack. Put it on the bottom. And then you can hose clamp it quite tightly. And I'll probably put one or two along here as well to keep it tight. Straighten them out under there. Table. Put those in. And typically, I throw the key in here as well so I don't lose it. Right. And you can see we have a working bike. It's essentially all there is, all up. It would have taken me probably a little over half an hour. The final one is going. Cut all the ends of the hose clamps off. Okay, we have the finished product. Uh, it's quite nice, it will get you a range of about 35 kilometres. Speed will be about 28 kilometres an hour. It's the 200 watt motor. Um, that's it, the charging is very basic. You have a charger, okay. this goes to your power point. And you have a terminal, unplug it here, plug it in. It'll be, have a green light, uh, sorry, it's, it's a green light Usually, when it's just turned on, that will have a green light. When you plug it in, the light will turn red. Red indicates charging. When the battery is full, this light will go green and the, it's, it will stop the charging. It's quite safe. I generally recommend pulling it out. Okay, I guess we'll just take it for a quick little test ride to make sure all's okay. okay. Hi. There you go. Uh, thank you, Matthew Solar Bike. Uh, please send me an email if you have any queries about these kits. Thanks. Bye.